Welcome back, everyone. It's time for Eye on Vision for July. We have Dr. Mehta joining us again. Thanks for coming back. We haven't seen you for a while. Thanks so much we've for having some, me. Yeah, we've got some questions from social media that maybe you can help with. Sure. Um, Betty from Havasu says, how can Amsler Grid and Amsler Grid help manage eye health from home? How is okay. that used? Yeah, so, you know, basically an Amsler Grid, what it is, it's just basically a square grid that has a bunch of vertical and horizontal lines, and it has a central dot right in the middle. And it helps us identify, uh, basically determine whether or not there's any changes in the vision that we need to bring the patient in for, uh, whether it's macular degeneration, or whether it's a macular hole or macular pucker, mm. vitreomacular traction, a lot of different sim uh, syndromes that can be monitored by an Amsler grid by the patient at home. So they don't actually have to come in oh. for the evaluation. If they notice a sudden change in the grid from one day to the next, oh. they can come in and see us. A little eye exercise. Yeah, huh? exactly. So okay, what they're cool. looking for basically is a sudden onset of new distortion or waviness in the lines of the grid. And you want to check one eye at a time. If you're looking with both eyes, you might not pick it up, but if oh. you cover one eye, Hold the grid about 14 inches away from you and look for a new onset of distortion or waviness from one day to the next. That could indicate that your disease or your condition of the eye is getting worse and then we need to see you right away. Okay, well, what a great way to be on top of, Absolutely. On top of yeah. it. Okay, and next, Carol from Havis who says, what is an OCT and what do they show and how are they used to manage eye disease? Yeah, that's a great question. That's so sad. OCT stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. And it's an imaging modality that we use in, in ophthalmology. As a matter of fact, over the past two decades, I would say that that's probably one of the most significant inventions in ophthalmology that we've seen. Um, it's very important because it helps to image not only structures in the front of the eye, but also in the back of the eye. And it's a very high resolution, which mm -hmm. means that it'll help us determine whether there is fluid building up in the retina, whether or not there's any scar tissue developing on the retina that can cause distortion of vision whether or not there's any significant hole development in the macula, which is the center of the retina. So it offers a lot of utility in wow. diagnosing and managing eye conditions. And the, the beauty of it is it's a non-invasive test. It takes about five to 10 seconds to Does do. Does it hurt? And not at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a picture. Okay. It's just a picture oh, okay. of the eye. Okay. And it, it gives us a cross-sectional image map of the retina. So that way I'll be able to determine whether or not you need treatment for any particular eye condition uh, that it can diagnose. So, I mean, it's a fan fantastic, minimally invasive, quick Great. and painless procedure that gives us a lot of information. Okay. Okay, Bruce from Havasu says, can you explain an anti-VEGF treatment? What is that exactly and how does it help wet macular degeneration? Right, so anti-VEGF treatments are the uh, mainstay of treatment for macular degeneration. They've only been around for about 10 years or so but they've really revolutionized the way we treat macular degeneration mm. and other conditions such as diabetic retinopathy and retinal vein occlusion. And what it is, it's an injection into the eye and it mm -hmm. sounds painful, an but we, we numb mm. the eye first so you don't feel anything okay. and then we subsequently do the injection. The medicine goes into the vitreous cavity which is in the middle of the eye and then slowly diffuses into the retina and the subretinal space and that's how it achieves its um, it's action. Okay, and so would it be a series of injections? Typically in the beginning, or? when we first diagnose you with macular degeneration, it is a series of monthly mm. injections. We do one, one a month for about three months. Mm -hmm. Then we oh. stop and just we, we take the pictures again with the OCT, like I mentioned before, and we see whether or not the fluid is gone. And if the fluid and the blood are gone, then we can stop and just reevaluate you at the next visit. Okay. The bottom line, though, is that with these anti-VEGF injections, often they do require monthly in, uh, treatment. Wow. Sometimes indefinitely, you know, depending on how severe the disease is. But we are working very hard at f finding out ways to maybe lengthen the interval between injections. And oh, okay. there's a lot of research in this field right now, and we, act we actually happen to be doing a lot of that, the retinal consultants of Arizona. We're trying mm -hmm. to see whether or not there's anything that we can give that might be able to lengthen the interval between the injections so that instead of getting injections once a yeah. month, you're getting injections once every three or four months. That would be the goal, yeah. ultimately. But if it helps, that's Absolutely, good. Absolutely, yeah. And Larry from Kingman says, can macular degeneration lead to complete blindness? Yes, yeah, that's it, a very good question. Can, and a lot of people it, get worried that when they lose, mm -hmm. ma when, they, when they get diagnosed with macular degeneration that they're gonna go completely blind. But that never happens, actually. Oh. What ends up happening is that with macular degeneration, the center of the vision can get very grayed out to the point where you can't have you have difficulty reading or driving oh, okay. or doing activities of daily living, but you'll always have that peripheral vision. That should not go unless you have another condition that can affect the peripheral vision like glaucoma. 
Okay. But macular degeneration itself will never affect the peripheral vision. So it will never be a lights out scenario where oh, you're just good. not going to be able to see at all. You'll always have some useful vision in macular degeneration. Okay. Is there any type of corrective lenses that can be used when you have? Because if, if there's a spot out or a spot yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. So basically, you know, you can use a magnifier. And a magnifier, oh, okay. sometimes in that central grayed out area, can help magnify the image onto the retina so that it can effectively reduce the size of that central area where you're not seeing. Gotcha. So okay. the problem with magnifiers, okay. though, of course, is that it decreases your peripheral field of view. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's some give, the and take, solution, give and take there, but, you know, at least it's an option. Okay. And finally, Sarah from Kingman asked, who's at risk for retinal detachments and what are the warning signs? Yeah. So retinal detachments, let's, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll just go back a little bit. It's just peeling of the retina away from the back wall of the eye. And the most common cause of a retinal detachment is going to be a retinal tear. And a retinal tear develops when you have an area of the retina that's weak, for example, in a condition like lattice degeneration or high myopia, which is basically nearsightedness. Mm -hmm. And so those are the two main risk factors. Others include family history or a history of trauma. Uh, but basically what ends up happening is there's a jelly in the back of the eye called the vitreous that pulls away from the retina. And in areas where the retina is weak, such as lattice degeneration or high myopia, that can actually tear the retina when it's pulling away, when the vitreous is pulling mm -hmm. away. And then fluid can enter through that tear and detach the retina from behind. So those are the biggest risk factors. Sometimes you don't even know if you have lattice degeneration or, you know, high myopia. So you have to go in for an evaluation. Checked. And the most important thing about preventing retinal detachments is making sure that you come in for the appropriate evaluation and treatment. The bottom line is the best intervention is coming in before you develop symptoms. Sure. Yeah. And they recommend a complete eye check every two years? Well, every uh, year, actually, every year. especially okay. after you turn 65, because okay. that's for macular degeneration, more okay. or less. But, you know, once a year, at least, after 65, every two years prior to then is probably a good uh, recommendation. Yeah. Okay. If you have any questions on retina disease, you, they can answer them for <laughs> you. You can go online at, or here's an email, communications at retinalconsultantsaz.com, or give them a call at 928-855-5026.